Hi, my name is Matt, and today we're going to learn how to remotely mount a display on a G2 series meter. This will also work on a A1 series, and you can do it with a TM series also, but you definitely have to use the FM approved remote kit when you're using when you're doing it on a TM series. Over here, I've got a standard remote kit, all out of the box and ready to go. And here I've got the FM approved remote kit. They're both very similar. The only big difference between the two is this one is FM approved. And what does FM approved mean? Well, this is an intrinsically safe or explosion proof display as is. If you take the display off or you add other accessories to it, you lose that. But if you wanted to remotely mount the display and you use the FM approved remote kit, then you can keep that FM approval. Now keep in mind that uh, if you use a standard remote kit, which again there's a little bit of difference and I will show you the difference later, uh, you cannot do that. Um, so that's one of the reasons I really like the FM approved kit much better. But anyway, first of all, the standard remote kit. You get first, or I guess you want to figure out why do you want to remotely mount the display? One, for convenience sake. Um, you know, the meter's way up in the ceiling and you want that display somewhere where you can easily read it. Or two, for heat sake. The display itself is rated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The turbine body is to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you've got something going through there that's 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you better get that display off of there so it's away from the heat. So you could mount that, you know, a couple inches away. You could mount it, you know, however far you wanted to go. You don't really want to go over 100 feet, and the, the kits, both of them, will come with 10 feet of cable. Okay, first of all, we have to take the display off. Just takes a standard screwdriver, Phillips head, and you've got these four screws that come right off. Takes just a moment. And I usually like to get the screws out because otherwise they fall on the floor while you're working on it and then you lose them, which is never any fun. Okay, when it comes to taking this display or uh, remotely mounting it, long story short, you're going to be taking your display and mounting it on this little box which we like to call a dust cover because it basically covers up the back, the back and keeps dust off of it so it's not going to be waterproof or anything. Now this little dust cover is designed to be panel mounted which you could mount an electronic panel. It comes with a nice template to be able to cut out just the right size to uh, put it in the panel. It comes with all the screws necessary to mount it. It comes with screws to put it back on, you know, on, put it on here and you get this piece on there as we'll get going. And so it has all the parts needed. Now I've also had people do this like on a truck and they would make a little bracket or something and mount this underneath their dash. And I've also had uh, people just mount them in the wall. Uh, in that case you do want to have, you have to run the wire along the wall or some people have even run it inside. But anyway, what you have to do uh, is Get your new magnetic pickup, that's this piece right here, and it mounts right on top. And you'll have to use, it comes with the new screws to do that, and actually these screws would work also, but we might as well use these. So I guess it doesn't matter if you lose some of those. But these go right in. Now do note, when I was putting that on, there is no seal there. And because there doesn't need to be one, this magnetic pickup is completely sealed. So if any moisture gets in there, it also drains right back out. Tighten this up. I always like to refer to a extent or to a, uh, a a remote kit as a glorified extension cord. It lets you take your existing display off of your turbine and mount it someplace else, and then. The remote kit is basically the extension cord. Now you notice I got this nice and tight down, tightened down, but this, we don't know how far down it is. You want to make sure this jam nut's pushed up pretty far, and then you want to tighten this until it gets snug against the turbine body. You'll be able to feel it. It'll just get there, 
And one of my, see I have to go a little bit higher off this nut. One of my problems is sometimes I've had people have the nut hit and they think they've bottomed out on the turbine body as opposed to letting the actual magnetic pickup you know, hit the turbine body. If it's too far away, it won't pick up the turbine spinning. Now I've got that nice and snug. You don't need to use a wrench or anything. You put this jam nut down. Now there I would use a, a set of pliers or something just to tighten it up a little bit. That's on there nice and secure and it's not going to come off. Now you have your 10 feet of cable. Now before filming, I went ahead and put these two little uh, connectors on the ends of the wire, but it does come with them. I'm not going to undo this, but it'll, if you uncoil it, you've got 10 feet of cable. And if you need to extend it, you can always put more cable on here and go further, and you want to solder that together to get a good connection. Now the, this box comes all ready to go. It's got a little sponge in there, has these little extra wires, all mounts to the back. And that's where these are going to go. And these, it doesn't matter which one goes on which, but you've got two places to do it. And it's going to come with two new nuts. So you're going to have two nuts, one on the bottom and then another one here on the top. Let's see if I can get my fingers to work on here. There we go. And you can tighten those up with pliers or whatever. Personally, I like to use a nice little nut driver because I have one. Just get that nice and tight on there. So now you've got your magnetic pickup going through here, connecting up here. Of course, that connects right up to these two wires. Now again, there's no polarity or anything, so it doesn't matter. They can get mixed up. Now you want to put this sponge in here. Get that in there, and then you just got your wires coming out. Now it comes to the display. Here. This is your old magnetic pickup right here. You kind of pop that out. It's held on by a little spongy piece. And there's two little holes back there. That's where these are going to plug in. Now, what you're going to need to do is you're going to end up having to cut this out. Now, I've had some people uh, go ahead and leave it in there and not cut it out and just put it off the side. I don't recommend that because you've got a live pickup just sitting here waiting to pick something up and if you have lots of you know generators or something in the area that can put out a lot of wavelengths it can pick that up and give you extra pulses give you an inaccurate reading the instructions tell you to cut it out at both both wires I've had some people just cut one wire and then that way they can put it off to the side cut it, they cut it right in the middle that way if they ever change their mind when to put the display back on they can always solder that back together so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off now. Just that, Like I said, I'm just going to cut one of them right in the middle. And that way I can get it off the side. Here's a good spot. Okay, now, like I said, these two wires, one's going to plug into the little hole right there. And the other one's going to plug into this hole. Now, I don't care where you look. It, it's we've never been able to find real good nice connections tight connections that would snap in and they fit in there nice and good but if you have some good vibration they can eventually come out that's why we have this sponge it's been used for years never once not worked the sponge just kind of holds them right in there so you get it all put on there nice and then it comes with four more screws and they screw into this of course, you're talking, uh, these are the type of screws that will dig into the plastic, so they're a little bit tougher to get in, but not too tough. So again, all you need is this Phillips head screwdriver, same one you took the whole thing apart with. And halfway there. And almost there. These remote kits have been used for years. They're very, um, very durable. I don't really have people calling up looking for new parts on these. They just keep working. Okay, so now that's it. We've got a, a remote kit. Uh, it's all ready to go. Like I said, this can be panel mounted because you've got your template to cut out in a wall or in a panel. Like I said, people have made brackets. But uh, either way, now your display is remotely mounted. Now I want to compare this one a little bit to the FM Approved Kit. The FM Approved Kit, let's move this over here just a little bit. It's 
get this open. It's going to have pretty much the same stuff. It's got the bag of screws. It's going to have the template. It's going to have the dust cover. But the big difference is the part that screws onto the turbine. It doesn't have this big magnetic pickup. It's got this little one here. And it's got two terminals uh, for your screws. So here, this is potted. This cable is part of this magnetic pickup. While well, this one is not. It uh, goes through, it connects up to terminals. One of the other reasons I like this one better is because if you were going to go over that 10 foot length and you were going to go say 20 or 30, you could extend this uh, cable like I was talking about, but you can also replace it with one solid piece because again these are just little screw terminals. It's the same type of magnetic pickup as you had before, so it can go right on top of there. Everything else is exactly the same. Now also remember I said this is the one that you want to use for one of the PVC, the gray TM uh, meters. The reason you need that is because the magnetic pickup has to go deep into a hole on the, the body itself and this magnetic pickup is small enough to fit down into that hole. While this one is just a little too large to get down in that hole. Now also your old display, or excuse me, the I wouldn't want to say your old display, but the display you took off of there, that magnetic pickup on one of the TMs had uh, several little spongy pieces in there, or some of them have a little hard plastic piece. You would actually take them off of that one, put them on here so it fits down onto that TM meter just like the old display did. Now keep in mind, it's, it's real simple when you see it, but uh, if you do have any questions on that type of thing, don't hesitate to give us a call. And that's about it.